Hello and welcome. I'm Kajiri, also known as Phenoxis. I am a professional tarot reader, and I'm here to show you my tarot collection. As always, this video is timestamped for your convenience. Feel free to skip to wherever you wish to start. My flip throughs are comment free, so if you just want to get to the goods, by all means, you're welcome to. Today, I have the Corrupted Tarot by Wormwood Gaming, the Luxury Edition. It is a self-published collaboration deck by over 70 artists. I will link the gallery below where you can visit each individual's artist socials. I paid 130 Canadian, which is $100 US, as a late pledge after the Kickstarter. The shipping was $30, and shipping took 11 days from New York to New Brunswick. Link is in the description below to purchase. This deck has a fantastic concept. Each card is based off the reversal meaning of the Rider Waite Smith system. There's little joy to be seen in this deck. It's hard and heavy, but it is beautiful. What I deeply appreciate is although it is a collaboration deck, the art direction stays consistent and on theme. The art director, Stephanie Cost, definitely put in good work in communicating with the 70 different artists to make a cohesive deck. This is a 78 card deck using the Rider Waite Smith system ish. As aforementioned, we are primarily dealing with reversed meanings. When these reverse cards are reversed, they become upright meanings. So basically, it's opposite day in Wormwood's house. For me personally, I don't use reversals in my practice. Instead, I use the concept of well defined or ill defined themes in my readings and that every card has both aspects. I use context clues to mind map the situation, and I read my spreads with each card having a role, but I also do look at the overarching theme to see if I'm going to be going into an ill-defined or reversal theme territory for the card that I'm reading. This deck is gonna be more heavy-handed on the ill-defined, but sometimes I need a good slap to the lips, so I'm okay with that. So let's get into it. So for extras, I got a free sticker. I always love a free ass sticker. It's the Wormwood logo. With the Luxury Edition, I did also receive the altar or tarot cloth at no cost. Um, I believe it's regularly $15 US. And the cloth does depict the four suits and it's quite large. I'm trying to get it all on camera here. But we have like the skull, the tree coming out of it, the pentacle on the back, we have a cup. Uh, it's really nice sword in the center here. It, it's a nice uh, velvet type material. It, it's, it's really pretty. Again, you can purchase this separately for $15 if you want, but it did come free with the luxury kit. So we'll set that to the side there. Now the box. I have a big issue with the box, a few issues with the box. First of all, it's ugly, it's boring, and the logo's off center. Um, you can tell that like a Magic the Gathering bro ordered these. Uh, I paid a lot for this deck and the box just doesn't quite cut it. I do like the open top boxes for easy access, but I'm going to show you in a moment why this is a terrible idea for a box, especially for this type of deck. I weep for the edging. So let's open it and I will show you the little white book first. Alright. Should I just grab that first? As always, I remind you, little white books are intended to be reference guides, not tarot study. I prefer my little white books to instead give me insight on the artist's decision for the imagery, symbolization, and the depictions in the deck. The reason why I prefer this is because there's a million better books out there to learn tarot from, but this little white book is the only opportunity for the artist to communicate their vision for the deck and offer tips and tricks. So we'll take a look. First of all, I do have to be very careful with this because there is reports of the glue giving out and losing pages. However, it does come with a free PDF, so that may not be a, an issue for you. But I can already hear the glue kind of cracking there. So it appears, I think this booklet is the same one that comes in the standard edition, so you're not losing out. This is not exclusive to the luxury. What I really like is that it is showing off all of the artists here and their socials. That's really, really nice because it, it does feel like 
an artist gallery, which is a huge strength of this deck. So we go here, it does kind of go into, like it's a collaborative, a large scale collaboration commission by Wormwood, which is pretty cool. And it does have like a little bit of details here. And it says here, the Corrupted Tarot is a deck like no other. The illustrations are based on the interpretations of the classic Rider Waite Smith cards when they appear reversed. As such, knowledge of the traditional meanings of the cards will be beneficial. These classic meanings are provided later in the booklet. So what we do have is that we have, of course, all of your reverse meanings here. And then in the back, this is where we have the more positive in their case the reverse meanings which becomes more positive which is really nice what i also found that was really nice in here is that if we go to the the suits it actually does i'll let you guys pause to read that but it does have a really good explanation of why they chose to follow certain themes in the suits it's really really cool i do like that so let's talk about the deck itself so move that over here and the edging the edging on this is absolutely stunning if we get close enough it does appear to be silver which is what they advertise but if you actually look close it's like a mirror edge you can see my fingers up in there that is really really cool but there's that scuffing that comes from that box. I don't feel like the edging's gonna last very long on this deck, unfortunately. Like, you can see my face. Hey, there's my face. Um, no, it's not my face, sorry. It's the... It's something. But it is so... reflective. It's not even funny. It's really cool. Like, that is neat. The back. So the edging is not exclusive to the Luxury Edition, but this is, which is a holographic back. And it is so subtle in the best way, and it looks great. This is the main reason why I got the Luxury Edition, is I wanted the holographic back. And when it comes to the front, they are, they are foiled as well. And again, that's an exclusive to the Luxury Addiction. There is something I'm gonna point out right away because it drives me batty. We have the Fool card here and it is double zero. Why? Why is it double zero? Ugh, that's, I don't know, that's really annoying to me. And it just, <laughs> you can just kind of tell that this was not created by a tarot company, if that makes any sense. And to compound on that is that there isn't any details on like what finish they used or the thickness, which is in tarot collecting especially, it's, it's pretty important because that kind of dictates whether the cost of the deck is worth it. You don't want to be spending $100 on a deck and then have the card quality not be very great. So the fact that they did not actually communicate that indicates again they're just not too familiar with the tarot community or collection in general which is fine it's okay because you can tell as i said this is a gaming company not a tarot fulfillment company you're going to come across these little issues just because they just don't know i'm okay with chalking it up to ignorance now the card quality let's take a look at the size of it compared to an rws it's a tarot size it's actually really really tight and close we know what an rws feels like this feels very similar um the front is definitely more matte the back is glossy so i think that's really fascinating so we have a glossy back matte front that definitely does increase the production cost so i can see where the cost of the sorry the cost of the deck is pricier than most so I feel like we're just gonna get right to the flip through and I will have some additional thoughts afterwards.
Oh my god. I could literally pick out any one of these cards and be like, it's my favorite because they're so nice. I am not going to pick out any cards that I may have a gripe with because one, that would be actually way harder. And two, I don't want to single out any particular artists because again, all of them are absolutely stunning. So I'm just going to go over my A's. I had to just pick three, one from the majors, one from the minors, one from the... um courts and honestly I just picked the first one and ran with it because any of these are gorgeous we have the hangman that was the one that kind of really connected to first because again being the reverse meaning is kind of dependence and really being stuck and we have a very tortured soul they're actually upright which is almost in this case worse than being reversed because being reversed it's almost, it's happening to them, but when it's upright, it's very much so just chaining. I love that. We have the Ten of Wands. It's beautiful. Get right up in there in that face. The concept of burdens, and with the fiery wands usually being so bright, this is very cold, indicating that the fire of passion and creativity has just died out on the whole concept of burden harsh and it's beautiful we have the page of swords this is just a beautiful piece and yes buddy's dead because it does depict again being in a reverse meaning very much so hubris and there's so much potential when it comes to the pages the pages are the potentials of the suit so to show that this person is dead and gone is an end of potential and it's it's just I just look at all that. That is a beautiful painting. Like, I couldn't imagine if this artist were to try to come up with another, like, a whole full deck to themselves, it would take them 10 years. Because that's so crazy, the amount of work put into that. So, shuffle quality isn't that bad, honestly. I was expecting it to be worse, but I'm just so careful with it because of that edging. I'm not sure how well that edging is going to last. I don't know if it's because of the book or because of the printing on it. Uh, I almost would have to like leave these decks which would kind of kill the purpose of having that really nice edging because if you have one card kind of separate it, it's not going to be as nice but what can you do? But it does shuffle smoothly and I think that has a lot to do with the glossy backs and matte front like it's almost it's almost a delight to feel honestly it really feels nice on the hand because you do have that mix of matte and gloss i really do appreciate that it does shuffle very very nicely and when i say gloss i mean it, it's almost plastic you know what no i think it is it's plastic so we got plastic backs and then we have matte front which is really cool like i would i'm not gonna try but i'm pretty sure these cards are plastic so the shuffling on it is is a tier for sure thoughts i am going to let things slide um strictly on the case that they are a gaming company not a tarot fulfillment company this is definitely something that they're going to use within their tabletop games because i know that D, D has a tarot um what's the word Com Mechanic, that's the word I'm looking for. It has a tarot mechanic now. So that's the reason why a lot of these gaming companies are now coming out with full out tarot decks, which I ain't mad at it. I'm definitely not mad in any way, shape, or form. The concept and the quality of the art does make up for its physical shortcomings, like the box and there is some, there's some design choices that I don't necessarily agree with. Like, although that these borders are absolutely beautiful, like, bad example, but you can kind of see some of the art coming out. Like, they did a lot of work. Borders like this is really notoriously difficult to work with when it comes to printing because the you're going to watch margins and if something's slightly off, it's going to look like hell. But again, I am willing to overlook 
the choices in printing because of the quality of the artwork. Like, I've gone through this deck a few times and I'm still like, oh my god, I forgot about that card because there's so much to look at. It's almost overwhelming with how beautiful it is. It is like a gallery in your hand. And when it comes to that little white book, because it does show off the artist and it does give you details about the artist here, this is really what you're paying for. The price of the deck being $100 American is probably more reflective of the art than the card quality. Not only that, I would probably feel like because of the what they used, again, that gloss back with the matte front, that's going to be expensive. So you are kind of paying for that. Again, I would be more or less concerned about long-term shuffling and how this is going to hold up. However, being gaming nerds, people sleeve their cards. So I think that was basically where I was intending to work with. Uh, I'd have to really kind of consider to see if I'm going to sleeve this or not. I think I might have to, although it's not going to be very easy for divination because that shuffling is going to be a pain in the neck. But overall, I am very, very happy with this deck because the artwork blows anything else on the market out of the water. It's stunning. So yeah, I hope that's helpful to you in some way. If you do follow me on my Instagram, which is at Phenoxus, I will be posting a spread inspired by this deck and I do post like aesthetic photos all week. If you want to get an offering to the Algorithm Gods my name, please like and subscribe and comment below your favorite card from this deck. Those comments do help me out a great deal and I do respond to as many as I can. I also do post tarot reviews every Sunday and for new releases like this, I'm going to try to get it out ASAP. So that subscription is not going to be wasted. You will not be without. That's it for me. Good luck and remember your power.